I wonder, would a real-life RPG application be cool? And so I built one with skill points and levels and experience and much more. I'll show you how this happened by going back a few days to where it all started. Let's have a look at building some sort of like an RPG application, something that tracks your progress. So many times I'm learning a language or a framework or even I'm doing some work and I really don't know where I'm at. I'm in a rut, just repeating the same thing over and over, but I'm not getting anywhere. I wanna actually see some results, maybe gaining experience and leveling up. So let's see if I can turn this into an actual application we can build. And I couldn't sleep all night, so I decided to wake up early and go to the office to get started on this project immediately. Today is Monday and it's absolutely beautiful outside. What I want to do is create a design for this idea of an RPG. So I'm going to pull out my iPad and we're going to just get started. This is my favorite part of the creative process, trying to let ideas flourish. What I'm going to do is pull in all my favorite elements of RPGs that I've known over the years. Things from Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z and Final Fantasy and meld them all into a UI that works for developers. I want something that really incentivizes the learning process and gives some feedback to people who are trying to see how they're progressing through their career. So here's what I've come up with and what it basically means is that you have a leveling system that is dependent on each one of your days. You start off with your regular day, so that'd be like a Monday and you have around 8 hours to use. And for each hour, you're going to get a skill point you can attribute to. Now, the attributes are going to be things like HTML or CSS or JavaScript and each time you apply one of those, you get a little bit of experience. Now we know that to become an expert in anything, it takes about 10,000 hours. Now if we chop that up, it's more or less about 100 hours per level if we were to make a level 100 the level gap, where you're pretty much a master. So what I'm thinking is that we might do a little bit of a curve where the very first level is about 10 hours and each one of those basically progressively increases. So by the time you get to level 99, you need about 200 hours in order to be able to grow to the next level. Okay, so that was pretty cool. We know that we can actually create it and we've got some metrics we can measure against. Now, we've got a general idea of the design. What I wanna do next is have a look at building the actual thing in terms of Figma, like a real good looking UI, then putting all together into something that'll actually interest people. Let's do that now. And this is the workflow I usually like to do. Trying to sketch out ideas on my iPad and then move them across to a Figma design page. So what I'll do is open up Figma here and I wanna pick out a number of different things in the Figma design. Things like colors as well as icons. But while I've done research on my iPad, I'm gonna do some more research to have a look at what other RPGs are using for things like their color as well as their progress bar and try and visualize this into a mobile phone kind of interface that we could use, for example, on my iPhone at any point in time where it's easy to tap on buttons to level up your skills as well as optimize it so that I can view everything on the screen all at once in terms of a UI and a UX perspective. And we're done. We've come up with this nice dark theme style and I actually personally like this. I think it all stands out quite well so let's jump into the next day. Yesterday's designing went pretty good. I'm actually quite happy with the results. I've put it here on my phone and as you can see we've got all the elements you need for an RPG. So things like the level, the experience, the skill points. I've put in different skills like HTML, CSS and JavaScript which I think we'll be able to tap on as you improve on them and they'll gain to your overall overall experience. Now that we have this design, we actually have to make it work. And to do that, we're going to have to implement things like a database and a framework and maybe a library. What I'm thinking is maybe running it up in React so you can view it on the browser as well as on your phone. And in terms of the database, we're going to use AstraDB. Let's actually have a look at them. AstraDB is a database as a service, one that's built on top of Apache Cassandra. They're entirely free up to 80 gigs and you should try them out. I'll add a link in the description below. They were kind enough to sponsor this video so let's do a deep dive into what they do and how they'll work for this RPG application. If you haven't heard of them before, they're created by Data Stack, and it's a company that specializes in enterprise development of applications. They've worked with big names like Netflix or Priceline or Barracuda, and you might be asking why use AstraDB? Well, it's not only serverless, but you can avoid difficulties like installation, configuration, and scale. AstraDB takes care of all of that. So realistically, I'm just gonna have to click one button and I'll have a database up and running, which is pretty cool. There are no lockings, and if you wanna get started with them, you don't even need a credit card. 
they also plug into pretty much anything, whether using JSON tokens, REST, GraphQL. So what I'm thinking is let's actually start using them right now. And I can show you more or less how easy it is to get them into your next project. What I'm going to do is plug them into the current setup that I'm doing by simply creating a database on their ecosystem. As I mentioned earlier, a sign up is completely free, even without a credit card. So I clicked try for free and I went through the prompts. You can log in through Google or through GitHub, but I'm just going to put in my username and password because that's always much easier for me. And that's it. The account is created. Now what I need to do is double check what kind of developer I am. Am I a JavaScript developer or Node.js? Since I'll be doing stuff in the back end, I'll probably select Node.js. Now we're into the UI and this is nice and clean with a nice call to action here to create a database. So let's do that. I'm going to select the database name here to just be called RPG and we'll select a providing service to run this on. You can run this on Google Cloud or for example AWS if that's what you prefer or even for example Microsoft Azure. But personally I've always liked building things on AWS because that's the ecosystem I'm used to. I'm going to select a region here, South Pacific as well as Sydney and we'll create our database. And that's done. Today, I'm thinking of actually coding out this application. We'll probably run up Create React App because that's nice and easy. And instead of running up Node.js, which might be overkill for this project, I'm thinking of Netlify and creating it sort of serverlessly to connect to AstraDB and pull in these stats and experience points. So let's have a look at doing that right now. And so I opened up VS Code and ran Create React App to create a new application for this app. Then I waited for node modules to install, which I swear used to be faster in the past. So I decided to meditate, have some lunch, have a coffee, walk the dog, go for a ride, go to the gym, and eventually, more or less an hour later, it was finished. With React now initialized, we can actually start hacking, which is my favorite part. For the design, I'm going to have a Figma board open up with my code on the left-hand side, and I'm thinking of using some plain HTML and CSS, but then I decided to use Tailwind CSS, simply because it was doing the same things that I was trying to manually write out in my code. I also took time and care to make sure that the app application would be a mobile first application, but it would still work on desktop so that I could resize it to any scale. With that more or less done, I've got my code now finished. And while the code for the HTML front end is done, I don't have any functionality. So let's have a look at building that out next. To give you guys some perspective, it's been about a week now since I've been working on this, and I think it's really cool. I'm gonna be jumping into the functionality and the database next, but before I do, I think I'm gonna put it up on GitHub, and I'm gonna share it so that you guys can actually download and test it out yourselves. You can pull requests and add in features if you want, and I think that'd be really cool. Anyway, let's just jump back into it. Wow, that was actually way harder than I thought it'd be. I had some difficulty trying to calculate the experience and when to level up, but I've got it working now. Let's have a look at how it actually functions. The main goal is to apply skill points to things you're learning, like HTML or CSS or JavaScript. As you apply skill points, you get experience. And when you reach a threshold, you level up. The more skills you learn, the more levels you'll gain, and the whole thing is to make a sort of gamification out of the whole experience. In terms of the code itself, I've got a shared state with some functions that basically change it. The function modifies the state, and the state is then shown in the component. Right now, all the state is client-side, which means that we need to plug a database in and have this pull from the database directly. This will allow us to persist data between different types of sessions as well as devices. So let's have a look at doing that now. The first step is to actually connect the database to our application. We're going to do this through an SDK. There's lots available here on AstraDB and we're just going to use the one here for JavaScript. But before all that, we need something called an application token to actually use it? Well, it's something you place in an env file to make sure it's a secure connection and this is something you shouldn't share out to other people. Let's create that and copy paste it in now. Then I went ahead and installed the AstraDB collections module and waited for it to install. Now let's have a look at how we start using this package. First, I don't want to configure an entire backend, so I'm going to do the thing serverlessly. We can use Netlify to be able to do this. It's a way to essentially have routes without having a backend. What I'm going to do is install their CLI package, and I'm going to do this inside of my console so I can run their commands. We're not done yet. There is one more package I want to install, which we'll use later with the database, which is node-uud. This will allow us to create a unique ID every time we create a new database entry. And with all that done, we're now ready to start creating some files for Netlify. I created a folder called functions and another one called utils. In here, I'm going to set the connection to the database using the env file we created earlier. Since these are git ignored, then you don't have 
to worry about them being exposed to the public. After that, I connected to my namespace and started creating my actual API endpoints. There was one for create, get, update, and delete. And with that done, I decided to actually test it. So I ran up Netlify dev and had a look if those endpoints actually worked. The only problem is I don't actually have any data yet. So let's create some data. We'll actually hook this straight into the front end now, so we can actually create skills that populate the database. I created a new tab on the menu called skills, where we'll be able to add different types of skills as well as their color. Later, this should be automatic. All changes are made in real time, so as soon as we start adding them, they're showing up in our database as well as on page reloads. The update handler and the create handler as well as the delete handler will allow us to modify them as we need. I tested this out by adding the skill Angular and making sure that that worked. It did, and next I updated the color to be red, the same as the delete button which we'll be using very soon on it. The way I got this to work was by creating a new folder in the React project. On the front end, I created a folder called utils just like on the back end and a file called APIs. Here I'm just doing regular fetch commands to pull in different URLs with different methods from the serverless API endpoints. This means I can finally add data by creating an event handler on the front end called create skills, and this accesses the back end same URL and creates it on the AstraDB database. And we're pretty much done with a working version that seems to work on my computer. Then I put it on my phone. I added it to the home screen so I could access it at any time. And it hooks straight into the database, loading up all the skill points and experience, which is pretty cool. If you want to try it out, simply clone the GitHub repository, which I'll add in the description and run up a copy of AstraDB and you'll be up and running. It's pretty cool and pretty fun to use. So I hope you guys check it out and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you.